Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College again. Today, we're going to work on scientific notation. Now, this is going to be a two-part video. In the first part, we're going to try to explain what scientific notation is, what does it represent, and then in part two, we're going to take numbers that are not written in scientific notation and put them in the proper scientific notation for this class, which is beginning algebra. Of course, before we get started, we've got to see what Charlie's up to. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we're doing scientific notation, so here we go, right there. Now, here's some examples of numbers that are expressed in scientific notation. 1 times 10 squared, there you go, 2 times 10 negative 2. Now, notice the underlying numbers there, okay, they meet the condition for scientific notation for this course, beginning algebra. The underlying numbers above will always be equal to or greater than 1, or they'll be less than 10. And so those numbers meet the criteria. So here are some numbers that are not written in this beginning algebra format for scientific notation. 0.1 times 10 squared. Well, 0.1, that's less than 1. We don't want that. 21 times 10 to negative 2. We don't want that. 21 is bigger than 10. 0 0.83, well, that's less than 1. We don't want that. Or 83 times 10 to negative 3. 83 is bigger than 10, we don't want that. Remember, for proper scientific notation in this class, the numbers have to be between 1 and 10, or they can equal 1. These are valid numbers, though they mean something, but they're not the scientific notation format that we're looking for in this class. So, let's talk about scientific notation. What do they actually represent? Now, I know some of you say, oh, I just move this one to the left and the right, and that's all. Yeah, that's like that song, huh? To the left, to the right, and all that other stuff. Well, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, 1 times 10 squared, yes, you can just move the decimal, but let's try to understand why this works. Okay, 1 times 10 squared. Pay attention, Charlie. Yes. All right, here we go. 1 times 10 squared. What does 10 squared mean, Charlie? 10 times 10. 10 times 10, that's right. 10 times 10 is how much? 100. 100, obviously. And 1 times 100 is what? 100. 100. So 1 times 10 squared does represent 100. That's right. Okay, 2 times 10 to negative 2, Charlie. What does 10 to negative 2 mean? 1 over 10 squared. 1 over 10 squared, that's right. So we're going to multiply 2 times 1 over 10 squared. Let's write 2 as a fraction, 2 over 1, and 1 over 10 squared is 1 over 100. How do we multiply fractions, Charlie? Straight across top. Straight across top. Straight, straight across, across bottom. bottom. That's right. So 2 over 1 times 1 over 100 is 2 hundredths, or 2 over 100. How do you write that as a decimal, Charlie? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, there you go. 2 times the negative 2 does mean 0 0.02. That's right. Well, let's do this one. 8.3 times 10 to the first power, Charlie. What does that mean? 8.3 times 10. 8.3 times 10. Now, what does 8.3 mean, Charlie? What? 8 point, well, okay, 8.3. What does that mean? What? It means 8 plus 3 more tenths. It's like a mixed number. 8, 3 tenths. Well, if we have 8 and 3 tenths, and we're going to multiply by 10, we have to use what property, Charlie? Distributive property. Distributive property. That 10 has to be multiplied in those brackets. So let's do that. What's 8 times 10, Charlie? 80. 80. Plus, what's 3 tenths times 10? That would be 3. That's 3. And what's 80 plus 3? 83. 83. There you go. So, 8.3 times 10 to the first power does equal 83. Now, how about 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3, Charlie? What does 10 to the negative 3 mean? 1 over 1,000? 1 over 10 cubed, which is 1 over 1,000. Remember, 8.3 means 8 plus 3 tenths, right? And we're going to multiply by 1 over 1,000. Okay, so once again, we have to use what property, Charlie? Distributive property. Distributive property. And when you multiply 8 times 1 over 1,000, you get 8 over 1,000, and 3 tenths times 1 over 1,000 is 3 over 10 thousandths. Now, we'll write the fractions as decimals. 8 over 1,000 is what, Charlie? 0 0.008. 0 0.008, that's 8 one thousandths, and 3 over 10 thousand is written as how? 0 0.003. That's right. 0 0.0003, which is 3 ten thousandths. And if you add the two together, you do get 0 0.0083. 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3 is scientific notation for 0 0.0083, right? Okay. Well, yes, there is a pattern to these decimals. We're going to get to that in a second. Don't worry. Just hold on. You too, Charlie. Okay, here we go. Let's look at 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3, and let's look at it in kind of a mixed number format. You'll see what I mean. 8.3, we said, is 8 plus 3 tenths times 1 over 1,000, right? Okay. Well, 8 plus 3 tenths is 
a mixed number. It's 8 and 3 tenths. That's what a mixed number is. 8 and 3 tenths simply means 8 plus 3 tenths. You've got to know that. Now here, we're going to take 8 and 3 tenths, which is a mixed number, multiplied by 1 over 1,000. So a lot of you know the pattern. You go, you know, 10 times 8 is 80 plus 3. Yes, that's a pattern. But why does that work? That's what we're going to explain here. Well, remember, 8 and 3 tenths is the same as 8 plus 3 tenths. Now let's do a common denominator. 80 over 10 represents the 8 plus 3 tenths, right? Now what's 80 tenths plus 3 tenths, Charlie? 83 tenths. 83 tenths, that's right. So there it is. That's why that pattern works. Remember, 10 times 8 is 80 because there's 80 tenths there, and then you add the 3 to get that 83 tenths. Just showing you how it works. Now, 83 tenths times 1 over 1,000. How do you multiply fractions, Charlie? Straight across, straight across, across, top, top, straight straight across, across the top. Straight across the bottom, right? Okay, so what do we get here? 83, 83 over 10,000. 10, Very nice, Charlie. Now, how do you write that as a decimal? 0 0.0083. 83 thousandths is? 0 0.0083. 0 0.0083. Very nice. Uh, okay. Huh? Now, I know a lot of you are just dying to get to this. Well, we just move the decimal this way and that way. Yeah, you do. Well, let's talk, okay, let's talk about that now. We have 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3. And yes, there's a pattern here. 8.3, look at our final answer. The decimal was moved which way, Charlie? To the left. To the left three times, that's right. Somebody wrote a song about that, that's right. To the left, to the right, that's scientific notation. Anyway, let's go on here. Yes, you move the decimal to the left three times, okay? And so that's how you get that answer from scientific notation. So let's talk about that pattern so I know a lot of you out there, they want to do it that way. Okay, fine, let's do it. Okay, here we go. We have one times 10 squared, okay? so. In this case, where's the decimal on the one, Charlie? Just to the right. That's right, it's just to the right. Now, okay, we're gonna move the decimal, which way, Charlie? To the right. To the right, two times, because 10 squared, when you multiply by powers of 10, if you see a two up there, it's positive, you move it to the right. How many times, Charlie? Two. Two times. Now, if we move it two times, what do we have to do? Put zeros. We gotta put zeros in there to give us that 100. There's your decimal, your answer is 100. There you go. So in this case, we actually multiplied by 100. When you multiply by 100, move the decimal to the right two times. Now, this next one, 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, remember, the decimal is just to the right of the 2. Now, 10 to the negative 2 actually means 1 over 10 squared, which is 1 over 100, right? So you're actually dividing by 100. But some of you just say, oh, I have a 2, right, with a decimal to the right, and I have a negative 2 as my exponent, of the 10, and I move the decimal which way, Charlie? To the left. To the left two times, because you're dividing by 100. Put your placeholder zero there, put your decimal, and the answer is 0 0.02. So make note, in this case, we divided by 100. Okay, let's do the next one. 8.3 times 10 to the first power. Okay, we're multiplying by what, Charlie? 10. 10, that's an easy one. 8.3, we move the decimal to one the place to the right, and we just put it there, that gives us the 83, we multiply by 10. Okay, we got one more, 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3, Charlie. Okay, we have an 8.3. We have our exponent on the base 10 as a negative 3, so we're going to move it which way, Charlie? To the left. To the left, three times. What do we need to do? Zeros. Put your zeros in there, put your decimal down, and there's your answer, 0 0.0083, in which case we divided by 1,000. Anyway, here's another one. 5.2851 times 10 squared. Oh. Which way to move the decimal, Charlie? Right. To the right two times. That's right, because there's a 2 up there. And you move it once, twice, so your answer is what? 528.51. In this case, we multiply by 100. Let's do one more here. 1.2985 times 10 to the negative 5. You move the decimal which way, Charlie? To the left. To the left. Five times. Go ahead and do that. We need to put what in there? Zeros. Our zeros for our placeholders. There we go. And put your decimal place there. There it is. And so your answer is right there. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 9, 8, 5. Very nice. In this case, we divided by 100,000. We get time for one more. <laughs> Here's a negative one. We'll do it really quickly here. 7.08. Move it to the left three times. Put your zeros in there. And there you go. Your answer is negative. Here, we divided by 1,000. That's it. We'll see you soon for part two.